The following is an excerpt from the novel, June 23, 2050, A Day's Media, by Martin W. Kennedy. Book available to buy now on Amazon. June 23, 2050, A Day's Media, is a novel containing leaked emails, transcripts of recorded phone calls, private correspondence, newspaper articles, and transcripts of audio casts. It gives people a glimpse into that one day in the year 2050. The following chapter is entitled The Legacy of the Moon King. The Legacy of the Moon King, Thursday, June 23, 2050, article by Laura Carney. Will there ever be a character like Vihan Banerjee again? Not for a generation at least, I believe. Let us go back just a few years to 2044. Things on the moon are looking pretty sweet. The European Space Agency has its lunar camp. It is a camp that is well built and expanding. Not too far away, NASA has established a base that is also well constructed and growing. Within viewing distance of both these lunar outposts is the Indian base. Objectively better built, it boasts better communications equipment and is the jewel in the crown of India's achievements. Then Vihan Banerjee, celebrated lunar astronaut and second in command of the Indian mission, has some kind of break with reality. He assumes command of the mission, he orders Europeans and Americans to leave the lunar surface, and he declares himself the king of the moon. You could not make this stuff up. The cause of his mental deterioration is still not fully understood. The Indians had decided to play it safe with their base. To avoid as much surface radiation as possible, they built large portions of their compound about 12 feet beneath the surface. While European Space Agency and NASA personnel were being charmed by enormous views of the Earth, the groundbreakers of the Indian mission were putting in long, dark, dust-filled shifts. Their base ended up stronger, less prone to damage and communications issues, but the hard work took its toll on the alias team dispatched. When Saya Huja arrived with the second lunar team after three months, he replaced Banerjee as overall mission commander. There was no question of poor performance or incompetence. Banerjee and his team's efforts at establishing the base's initial structures were deemed a great success. The plan had always been to have a Hoosier take charge when his team landed. Somewhere during those long, dangerous days and nights making a livable home from hostile alien rock, it appears Banerjee began to feel quite resentful about a Hoosier plopping down on the surface in a shiny new moon suit and being welcomed as leader of the pack. In the push to have the base ready for the arrival of the second team, it was Banerjee who decided to shoulder most of the burden as leader of the first team. His colleagues have spoken since about seeing him skipping meals, ignoring basic protocols and putting himself under considerable pressure to meet their targets. It is one thing to go full throttle, in the relatively safe womb of our home world with all its built-in checks and balances. It is another thing entirely to do so on an unforgiving rock that would as soon spit you out as make you feel at home. So Indian Mission Commander Saya Huja woke up one morning to find Banerjee standing over his bed with a wrench. He proceeded to knock Ahuja out, throw him into a storage room, and lock the door. Then he informed a very concerned team of Indian astronauts that he was assuming command of the mission. Banerjee had just gained the dubious honour of having committed the first act of violence in the moon's history. That we are aware of, that is. He suited up and went out onto the surface, he made his way to the European base first. He damaged the doors on all the surface habs, leaving most trapped inside. He was approaching the NASA camp, Aldrin Village, when the mission commander, Ryan Heffernan, met him at one of their communication stations and asked him what he was doing there. The moon is my territory now, he replied. I have built my home here with my bare hands. Your team is to leave immediately, and I will be telling the Europeans the same. Commander Heffernan asked him simply if he had gone mad. This is the moon, and I am its king. I am the king of the moon, and I am ordering you to leave, 
was the reply he got. Whatever qualities Banerjee may have lacked, ambition was not amongst them. In a few short hours, he had committed the first act of violence in the moon's history. He had become the first human to land on and then claim sole authority over an extraterrestrial body. And by all accounts, he seemed intent on starting the first lunar war. All his plans came to zero when Dr. Daz of the Indian mission intercepted him on his return to their base. She injected him with a large amount of sedative. An unconscious Banerjee was then confined to his quarters and restrained to his bed until transport back to the surface could be arranged. His legacy remains. Crazed ambition, break with reality, or simple lust for power. Whatever the cause, there is no denying. It was one hell of a play. The idea of landing on another planet, a moon, or any stellar body is a humbling thought for most astronauts. They are filled with anxiety, concern, and fear. They place their faith in their training and their comrades to get them through. It takes a lot of steel to land anywhere in outer space, to start knocking people out and to declare yourself so lord and master of all you survey. Banerjee's declarations have entered the common vocabulary. You have an egotistical member of a popular band who claims he has all the talent and starts asking other band members to quit. People will call him King of the Moon. Maybe your new boss had some talent back in the day, but now he is out of his depth and struggling to maintain authority. People will call him King of the Moon. It is unlikely anyone will ever reach the heights of the original King of the Moon, though. Vihan Banerjee, you are a true original.